Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Dear learners, to the another session of International Business Management, I am Dr. Manisha Goswami, Assistant Professor at Institute of Business Management, GLA University, Mathura. Today we are going to continue with the international business environment. Let us look at what we did in the previous lecture and then we will proceed with the remaining portion of international business environment in today's lecture, lecture number 5. We, in the lecture number 4, we discuss about the political environment and while analyzing the political environment, we largely understood that government of nation play essential role in facilitating international business because it is the government who will be forming the policies, because it is the government who will be forming the law system for allowing the foreign investment in their own country. So if the ideology of the government is not favoring the foreign investment, like in case of North Korea in case of Cuba, they are not very much friendly with foreign investment. So they will be posing some restrictions on allowing the foreign investors in their home country. As a result, international business in such country could not grow and flourish. They will remain isolated from the globalization. So by and large, when we were going through the political environment, we tried to figure out the different ideology and philosophy the political system of different country holds and which particular country is facilitating more of foreign investment and which particular country is having restrictive and ceiling for foreign investment. Next we talk about the legal environment. Legal environment comprises of the law system related to foreign investment, custom duties, right? We come across various different type of custom duty, which may be a point of concern when you are dealing with export or you are having your own wholly owned subsidiary there in the foreign market. It has to be taken into consideration before taking any sort of the decision of having investments or having trading relations with any foreign, com for foreign country. Next, we talk about the economical environment. The economical environment of a country largely become a factor of reason of taking a decision of entering in X country or Y country. Because if a particular country having a lot of fluctuations in the env economic environment, you don't want to put your money there in because there is a possibility of your money to get stuck over there. So when you are selecting a country, you always look for a country where economy growth is taking progressively. Any stable economy also not be considered as a right place to in, in invest or enter into a country. So this is what we did in the previous lecture. It was just a glimpse of the previous lecture. Now we are heading towards the lecture number 5 and the learning objectives of lecture number 5 are Today we will be talking about the socio-cultural environment, their impact on international business. Second, we will talk about the technological environment and thirdly, we will be talking about the ecological environment along with the ethical issues prevailing in the environment. Now let's begin with the cultural environment. Cultural environment of a country play a significant role. Why? Because the culture is going to vary from country to country the way the political, economical and legal environment vary. But as far as the cultural environment is concerned, it is going to largely govern the consumer behavior. The, as far as the country like India is concerned, where the diversity is quite high, every individual customer of belonging to different religion here posing some different behavior. Because of the difference in the consumer behavior, companies have to moderate, customize their product as per the taste and preference of the customer of a country like India because of diversity prevailing here. 
until unless you are having a culturally universal products like uh, the software television or you are into some drugs or you are into some chemicals right these are universal culturally universally acceptable products until unless you are in such kind of product you have to undergo certain customization and for making a correct customization and modification in the product you need to know about the taste and preference of the customer and for knowing the taste and preference of the customer you should be well versed with the culture of that country culture seems to be an abstract but it is not at all it is it is like an asset to the organization if you able to understand the essence of the culture of a country it is going to prove an asset to you it is going to help you to gain profits in the particular market because you have understood the nerves of the country of that nation so culture consists of thoughts and behavior pattern that the member of a society learned through language and other form of symbolic interaction like their customs habit belief and values and the common viewpoint that bind them together as a social entity let's talk about the characteristics of the culture first characteristics of the trait of the culture is transgenerational i may be having certain belief system i may be having some ideology and those belief ideologies or the value system or the ethical things which i am posing or i am having is going to be passed on to the next generation and there from to the next generation so that means the value system one particular person hold is going to pass on those those value system to the next generation and it keep on passing from generation to generation another part of the culture is perspective there are certain socially acceptable norms and if you are not accepting those socially acceptable norm you are not the part of the society and if you are not the part of the society then you have to you have to take a onus of looking for a, a country where you can accept you can find a comfortable space to live in because the country the country to which you belong if you are not having a behavior which is socially acceptable you may get bigoted so you have to look for some other country where you get the social acceptance or your behavior match with the culture of other country say for example like most of the islamic country drinking alcohol is socially as well as legally banned however in india it is not socially acceptable drinking alcohol in a public places but in western countries it is okay so that's a perspective so you have to see the kind of social norms the kind of society to which you belong and the social norm this particular country is having accordingly you have to adjust your behavior next is socially shared another sort of the culture is socially shared because this is actually arising out of the necessity actually for example in india the family used to get their girl child married married in the early teenager in order to protect the girl child from evil eyes that was socially shared culture prevailing in india indian scenario till the 18th and the 19th century and in most of the part of the country still this is happening another example could be chinese family used to keep the uh, size of the feet of female daughter very small there was a time in china they used to make the female daughter to have small size of the feet so they make the child wear iron shoes since they born so that's a socially acceptable culture and the tradition prevailing in some of the portion of a country and which is liked by the people and this is this is how things used to happen and you have to accept it if you don't accept you will be bycotted other characteristic of a culture is learned culture is learned it's not inherited culture i am driving after looking around my society i look at people and learn something from them the place where i am born and brought up i am imbibing the culture of that place and that is what known as socialization or enculturation there are people who don't try to 
get the learnings of the society to which uh, to the place they are born and brought up are acculturation is known as acculturation that means they are not taking anything of their surrounding they are developing the culture of maybe the first western country they are highly influenced by the western culture most of the countries of asia and africa claim that their culture is getting contaminated because of the western country because people here people are living in asia people are living in africa but they are not developing the cultural system which african and asian country follow rather they are having inclination toward western culture this process is known as acculturation so the this is what we can say that we are learning from the society where we are born and brought up and we try to get certain things of those places and it is there in our behavior that is what known as socialization or enculturation whereas if we are born and brought up at one place but we are not uh, depicting the culture or we are not having such kind of the culture in our demeanor then it is what known as acculturation this is what asian and african most of the asian and african countries are claiming that their culture is contaminated because of western countries next is subjective that means it vary from person to person and it is going to be as it is subjective then you have to have the understanding that in this particular country what kind of culture is prevailing but because in my country the same practice is done for some other reason i am finding that this practice is happening in india also but the reason is something else take an example in some of the foreign country what used to happen the bride groom used to give money to the bride family for raising the girl child they used to compensate the bride family by paying certain amount of money but in india it is just opposite it is a name that we used to give the name of dowry to it here the bride family used to give the money to the bride groom family in order to help them to set up their new family system so the practice is same money transaction is taking place but the perspective is totally different that is what subjective cultures are another a characteristic of culture is cumulative cumulative is um that means the culture get accumulated because of certain circumstances happening in your life for the past years or maybe generation to generation certain things are happening your ancestor keep on letting you know that should that should not be done that should be the practice of your life say for example farmers have an accumulated circumstances the accumulated circumstances of having the crisis of money because of uncertainty in the environment there will be a rain or there will not be a rain the crop will grow or not because of this kind of psychological grooming or development among all the farmers in our country they have a feeling of accumulate the money for safeguarding the future because they are not sure whether the crop will grow on time or not whether the proper harvesting of the crop will able to take place in the current season or not so they have a habit of accumulating the money for safeguarding the future they have a habit of saving the money in the lockers rather than putting them in the banks or the in in the market so that is an accumulative culture because of some accumulated circumstances over the past or thousands of year so certain things are happening to your life and this goes into your thought process that this is not the way of living and we have to find certain other mechanism of having a better peaceful life then they start finding the solution to it and that is what the accumulative culture is next is the dynamic dynamic means ever changing and culture is also changing right today you are living in some village your behavior is different the moment you move to cities your behavior is going to different your living style is going to get different your consume your acceptance from the market is going to get different your living style is going to get different eating habits will also get different and the moment you move from city to the foreign country again there will be a difference in your behavior your attitude your talking everything is going to get changed so that means it is dynamic 25 years back if i remember parents don't used to allow us to go out for dining now it become a normal practice in the family earlier parents don't allow us to go for dining but now even parents are accompanying us to go for di- dining and having dinner lunch outside at least once in a month so that is a dynamic 
culture that is the change is happening in the culture and accordingly companies are getting benefit of such change in the consumer behavior taking place because of the change in the culture system now let's talk about the different dimensions of the culture every country is having their own culture so that's why it is mentioned here as a national culture and within the umbrella of a national culture there are going to be multiple business and every business will have their own business culture but those business are going to have certain organizations within the business and they will be having certain occupation within the business so these two things are also going to vary within the same business culture say for example the people belonging to the military area you just compare the two person the person from military a person from civil military person is going to pose a different attitude different behavior they will be very much punctual on time they are very much uh, they are very much committed to what they have stated on the contrary a civil person might not be so punctual might not be so committed to what the person has stated so that is the culture a person has developed because of the occupation to which he belongs people belonging to the police line their behavior their attitude their language is going to be very different from the other person there may be two friends who are born and brought up together from the same village but one picked up the line of the police the another one picked up the line of mnc both the people are going to portray the different behavior after 10 or 20 years of their time when they will be re reuniting so that is the occupational culture and all togetherly we need to manage as a multinational organization we have to give respect to the national culture we have to see what kind of domestic companies are prevailing in the country what kind of the organizational culture that means the different hr policies the people are having in india what kind of the finance policies the people are having in india what kind of marketing policies they are using in india promotion techniques and strategies they are using in india then when you are entering to india you have to take care of these organizational culture which is going to vary from time to time and you as a multinational organization have to find the best amicable solution to adjust and create your own space within this diversity now let's talk about the effect of the culture there are cross cultural communication process and negotiation within the effect of culture we have to focus on what the cross cultural communication process and the negotiation let's take an example of low context culture or monochromics that means you're very explicit when a particular person stating certain things and they are very explicit they are very clear to what they are stating is known as low context culture and monochromics can people from america europe usually show such kind of behavior what they would be doing they would be yeah, very clear in their statements they don't believe in rounding up the things they talk very straight they have a clear clarity in their mind that they what they want from you as a client or what they want from you as a employer so this is what known as low context culture because things are quite clear so it is very easy to decode what other person is willing to say to me so in such kind of conversation usually what happen there will be no ambiguity there will be no vagueness in the conversation but contrary to this there are countries like japan there are countries of saudi arab there are countries of india sorry there are countries of other part of the asia like india there are some high context culture that means we want to say something but we express in some other way and this create lot of confusion in the mind of a person who belongs to the country like america and europe because they believe in straight cut straight statements where in case the people from india japan are not so straight forward they will not be expressing you straight because they find if i'll be expressing straight for them it is disrespect 
to the other person who is listening to them. This is their culture that I, I cannot speak straight to the person. If I would be speaking straight, that means I am showing my aggression, I am showing my confrontation. That is why they keep these people do not want to express themselves very much straight to the people and there is a problem of ambiguity, there is a problem of misunderstanding and this leads to a lot of ambig uh, this lead to the lot of vague sort of the behavior at the end when the communication is going to end. Most of the time negotiation not take place properly because of this high context cultural or polychromic behavior. Next is the if next, next effect of the culture is cultural universal. Cultural universal are those kind of the products which can be universally acceptable. So, you do not have to alter much. For example, television, for example, your laptop, computer, mobile phone, medicines, right, medical equipments are cultural universal. That means, if uh, you are manufacturing in your country like Japan, you can easily transport to various other nations across the globe. It is going to be acceptable in the same form. There is no need of alteration. There is no need of customization. There is going to be no barrier of the culture before accepting your product. So, you need to see if your product is coming under such kind of universal product, globally acceptable product, then you are on the safer side. You do not have to worry much about the different country culture. Next is the cultural attitude and international business when it comes to our dressing habits and the eating habits. So, you have to give respect like in India. There are people who, mostly the people in India, the female in India wear saris. And if you being in India, banning a woman not to enter into a desk or to a play restaurant or a hotel because you are wearing a sari, it's not the right thing. You have to give respect to the culture of the nation. This is the culture of India of wearing a sari. If any female wearing a sari can enter in any place, if she is holding a ticket or if she is having a right to enter to a restaurant, a hotel or a desk, she can enter. Who, who you are to stop her? That means you are trying to be against to the culture of India and being in India. You are in India and behaving against India. That is not acceptable. So, you have to see what kind of culture is prevailing in India and accordingly you have to adjust your policies. Next is the eating habit. Most of the people wonder how Indians can be purely vegetarian because there are people uh, abroad the similar in the similar pattern the way we used to the way they people are wondering that how we can be purely vegetarian similarly we Indians used to wonder how anybody could eat snake how anybody could eat snail how anybody could eat cockroach this is the this is the same thing so we should respect this is not like hatred this is not like disrespecting the way you are wondering that we are purely vegetarian similarly we do wonder that how you can have a snake soup just after a drink how you can have a snail in your food habit how you can eat prawn lobsters in your food this is the same thing which this is also help is also creating an amazing feeling in our mind that how anybody can consume such kind of the food stuff the similar is exactly similar so we are respecting you you should also respect the heating eating eating habits and the dietary habits of the different nation now let's talk about the elements of the culture communication through language when you are setting the tone, when you are setting the words for communicating certain thing, you need to be very cautious because the same word may have different meaning in other countries language. So, you need to figure out that if I would be, if I am using Hindi as a language and if I translate this into Indonesian language, what this word would mean? If I am saying in Hindi dood and what is going to be mean in Indonesia that has to be figured out. Next is non-verbal communication. In India, we people believe in Atiti Deva Bhav. The moment anybody enter to a house and if we are having a dinner or lunch, we get up quickly and first offer the food to the person who has visited us. But in case of America and Europe, it is not the case. If 
the American person is having a dinner on the table and somebody visited that American person, he is not going to even get up from his table to welcome that guest. In India, there is no appointment system. You can barge to families and meet the people whenever you as a, whenever you as a guest feel comfortable to come to a place. But in America and Europe, you have to take prior appointment even before meeting your own child. So that is the non-verbal communication and the culture which is prevailing in Western countries. Time and culture, that means taking prior appointments. It's common in America, but it is not so in India. Indians are not known for their punctuality. Even Indonesians are also not known for their punctualities. But for America, time is money. For them, time is utmost important to be taken care of before anything else. Space and culture. That means we respect certain inches of distance between person, particularly a person of opposite sex. As far as the country like India or Asian country or Arabian countries are concerned, we want certain space of interaction. However, it can be possible for American and European people to have just few inches of distance. But in Asia and Arabian country, a proper space or distance should be maintained between two persons when they are having conversation or interaction. They don't want any sort of physical contact unless you are relative and friends. Culture and agreement. Culture and agreement, that means Americans are very clear in terms of their legalities. If they are okay, they say it's okay. If they are not, they are going to sue you or they are going to file a case against you. They are going to show their disagreement on and there itself. But when it comes to countries like Asia or Japanese, the people don't confront on face. They are disagree, but they are not going to confront. Because in the previous slide, we have just seen that in Japan and India, high context culture is there. They don't express exactly what they want to say. But in America, there is a low context culture. That means they say what they exactly want to say. And this is the implication here we could see in under the culture and agreement that these people don't show their confrontation on face. However, the American European people are very clear cut in what they have stated in their terms and conditions. They are very much clear. If they are not happy with the execution of those terms and conditions, they are going to show their disagreement on and there itself. They are not going to wait further. They are not going to wait for further counseling or other meetings. Culture of friendship. Americans are little practical. However, Japanese and Chinese people are emotional. American people do develop relations, but that is project based. Till the time we are having business, we are friends. The moment business gets over, we are just normal person. However, in case of Japan and China, the people first extend the friendship and if they develop the friendship, they try to see whether I can do a business with this person or not. And on the contrary side, American people first develop the business relation and then they see this person can be my friend or not. But in Japan and China, people first develop the relations, the friendships, and then they see whether they can do business with each other or not. So this is the difference in their attitude and eventually there will be a difference in the outcome also. Because when Japan and China are building the relation with some client and then client agreed upon of having a business also together, the commitment level is going to be very high because they will be emotionally connected for each other for doing the business. However, in case of America, there is no emotional connect. They are just doing the business because they are into the business relationship. 
But in case of Japan and China, they are developing first the personal relations and then developing a professional relation. So, I as a person will become emotionally connected to my client to get the work done. So, that is a strategic move as well. Culture and negotiation. For sure, the culture calls for the negotiation as well because you have to draw a line somewhere. Chinese people are very clever in terms of getting the best deal. They are tough to be negotiated. If they have decided one thing, they won't get that particular thing to be accomplished but in any ways. They always want to put them at the supreme level. Similarly, Americans are very straightforward in their terms and conditions. Mostly the developing nations, they are like the choose, they are not the choosers, right? They have to accept what is coming from the developed nations or the good economy. Culture and superstition is also going hand in hand. For example, in America, there is a practice of touching wood to protect the person from evil eye, crossing finger, and even they feel uneasy when any black cat cross their road. This is what common in India also, people feel uneasy if a black cat is crossing the road. In India, there are a lot of superstition like checking your planet movements of the horoscope before taking any call, right? You are going to be very much conscious before having any business deal. You will be finding some occasions to happen to take the business deal. Like if it is a dhanteras, then you will be taking some business deal. If there is Diwali, then only you will be going for some business deal, right? So we are we are following the culture of uh, of following certain rituals, and we are very superstitious about those rituals and the custom, and we strictly adhere to what is being stated. We follow the palm reading also. We follow Vastu Shastra also, right? So, the culture and superstition also to be taken care of. And many companies are taking the advantage of such superstitious belief of particular nation. They are finding the business opportunities in such superstitious belief of a particular country. Like the people have found the business of providing the Vastu interior. That is what they are taking the advantage of, the superstitious belief prevailing in the country, Feng Shui, which is prevailing in China. Culture and the gift. Another very important aspect, as we have seen in this few uh, uh, previous point, that culture of friendship. So when you are developing a friendship, you will be also extending certain gifts. You will be sharing certain gifts. But in America, gifts will always be given after the business deal. But in Japan and China, first they will be extending and sharing the gifts with each other and then they will be developing the relationship. There are some difference in some sort of the gifts. Like if you will be gifting a clock to Chinese people, they will feel offended. They don't like gifting clock to anyone. Like even clock, uh, clock to China or Taiwan, the same territory, knife in France, Russia and Germany, if you are gifting any you know, the different style of the knife for chopping purpose or some other vegetable chopping purpose, the Russian and German people are going to feel offended. You cannot even gift handkerchiefs to Thailand people, Italy, Brazil and Venezuela people. They don't like gifting such materials. So you need to know the culture before taking a call of deciding which particular gift item to be gifted. Now let's talk about the cultural implication on international business. Because of multiculturalism, every next country is so nicely diversified, having multiple cultures. So you have to have the literacy of the culture. You need to spread the cross-cultural literacy. That means either you have to be the part of the nation for longer span of the time, or else hire the local people from that host country who will be updating you about the culture prevailing in that country. That is what being polycentrism is. Next, culture and comparative advantage. Like in case of Japan, what Japan people are doing, they are developing commitment levels among their employees. 
and giving them the lifetime job security options. With this kind of sense of security in my heart, if I will be doing a job for a particular organization, I will be giving my 100% to that organization because I am having a sense of security that this organization is doing so many things for me. Let me also put my 100% and give back to this organization. And that's how they are gaining the competitive, uh, com uh, competitive advantage in the market. Even uh, they are also, uh, what these uh, countries are doing, they are also into advancement of their technology and helping the various other nations to start improving the quality of technology by expanding the services. Next is managing diversity through culture. What is happening now, they, there is a need to manage the diversity. There is a need to understand and respect the culture of the different nation. In just previous slide, we have shared certain examples to let you understand that how American behave, how Europeans behave, how Asian people, Arabian people, Japanese people, Chinese people, by and large, what kind of behavior, what kind of attitude these countries are having. So you have to find out the solution of adjusting in such country. You have to find out the gap of penetration in such market. That is what managing diversity is. Next is compatibility between strategy and structure. That means uh, you are going to give respect to the culture and you have to be strategist at the same time because you are not there in a country for doing charity for sure you are there in the country for earning the profits so what you would be doing you have to find out how this country moves what their by and large norms their regulations their rituals their culture is and try to find out the amicable solution to it this is what mcdonald did after committing a mistake of offering the beef they come up with the veg, veg burger here in india even Domino's is offering or using Indian curry over the pizza topping. That is again, which is not there in the foreign country because they know the Bangalore people like a certain Indian curry. So they are Domino's are offering the Indian curry paste instead of the normal paste over the pizza. That is a culture and the strategy compatibility. Even a company Ancient Paint changed their name to APCO for Australian. Why? Because Australians were little averse towards the name or the term Asia. So Asian paint changed their name to APCO. That means you are bringing the compatibility with the culture and you're coming up with your better strategy to penetrate and exist in the market. So these are the culture, cultural implication for the international business. Let's talk about the issues of cross-cultural management. In order to be culturally competent, a manager, what he needs to be, let's summarize the things, possess a strong personal identity. Understanding the culture of other nation doesn't mean that you are going to dilute yourself. You have to have your own identity, but respect other culture as well. We are not saying that first dilute yourself, disrespect your culture and then accept the other country culture. We are not asking for that. What we are saying, develop a strong personal identity, first respect your own culture, have the thorough knowledge about your own culture and equally respect the host country culture. Knowledge about other country culture is important. Display sensitivity towards other belief is very important. Communicate clearly. This is what we have seen in the previous slides as well. That if you are not communicating clearly, it will develop a ambiguity in the mind of person and proper decoding of the message will not take place, which results into failure of the deal or the negotiation process. Perform socially sanctioned behavior. That means you have to take care of social norms. What kind of the society norms are prevailing? Like in case when uh, initially when BPOs enter to India from America, they come up with the night working shifts. And this that was against the social norm of India, asking and allowing our girl child to go out for the night shifts. So you have to find the solution. So they come up with better cap security for the girl child. Right, so they try to make certain adjustments and people have also now accepted. Earlier it was a complete devastation in the society. They were totally against the idea of sending their girl child for the night shifts. 
So, issues of cross-cultural management has to be taken into consideration before you are taking a decision. Now, the next topic is regarding the social environment. Social environment is actually derived from the religion. The religion which you, the religion which you follow, is going to be the major, uh, major area where you will be having a social connect. You will be having a social relations with, like in uh, over all over the world, major religions are like. Christianity, Islamic, Hinduism and Buddhism. These are the four major religions across the globe. And these religions are going to define your behavior, your culture system also. And these religion system also drive your culture. Right? So, religion are affecting your culture. That means this is something supreme to be taken care of. That this is what written here, religion is one of the most important social institution influencing business decisions because it is also driving your culture. Next is the family system. Like in most of the Islamic countries or the ancient countries, there is a system of joint family. India and Muslim countries, there is a, the concept of joint families. And because of the concept of joint family, companies are going to suffer badly. Why? Because there will be less purchase of the item. Though frequency of the purchase would be high, but when it comes to some electronic gadgets, like I install a Wi-Fi and we are the family of 14 people, right? then single Wi-Fi is going to suffice the purpose. But if we split into two families or three families, there will be a need of three Wi-Fi. So family system also becomes sometimes the reason for stopping your prospects of doing business in a particular country. So initially when for foreign companies enter into India, they come up with the idea of splitting the family, asking the people to move from their home country to the location because they want that split to start happening and with that split they will start having a scope of expanding their sales in a particular country. Behavioral factor affecting the business because it is going to govern your consumer behavior. So how you behave is going to affect the affect the business deal. So they started playing with the brain also. Zindagi ke saath bhi, zindagi ke baad bhi, right? So such kind of the behavioral changes they start bringing in our mind. They started bringing in our thought process. Thanda matlab Coca Cola. That means agar hume pani pani pi pyaas bhi lagi hai, to hum Coca Cola kharide, right? So such kind of the behavioral change they start coming up with the advertisement, the punch lines and the tag lines. They start creating a change in the thought process to have a business in the market. Behavioral based group membership. I the same similar, uh, we can say the people having the same ideology will stay together, right? So uh, the people who are of same liking, same disliking are going to be a group, are going to be the member, are going to be the friend. So if I will be, ha I'll be having certain such certain kind of the group membership, or I'll be having some kind of the membership, then how I can be the one to penetrate my business in that socially acceptable group? That is also the concern of lot of business people. Motivation and achievement like masculinity. It is usually assumed, and to the large, it is true also in most of the country. Where the masculine people are more, that means males are more, those countries are more rational, they are more logical into the business. However, the countries having more of feminist, there the people have the business style of, the business style is little relation based. However, in the countries like India and uh, there the situation is moderate. So let us take an example of some of the countries having masculine, masculinity is at the highest like Japan, Mexico, UK, Germany and US. These are the countries where masculinity is at the highest and these countries are doing incredibly well in the economic market because they are very structured in their system. However, the countries like uh, Sweden, Netherlands, Denmark, Thailand, the feminism is more. They are also very structured, but their approach of doing the business is little relational based. In case of countries like India, Argentina, Canada, they have a moderate system, equal or more or less equal masculine and feminism. So you have to see which kind of dominance is there in a country. Accordingly, you can set your business policy, your style of dealing with the country culture or the country citizens or the workers there. Risk-taking behavior of 
such kind of country where masculinity is high is obviously going to be very high as compared to the countries where feminism is more because in feminist the behavior is towards more it's, it's inclined towards more uh, the more towards their family they are more focusing towards the betterment of the family right where in case they cannot take certain charges at the cost of their family where in the case of the masculine or the masculinity countries they are free to move from one location to another so they have a risk taking capability more as compared to those country where feminism are more individualistic and collectivistic individualistic are those countries like america european countries they believe in doing the work individually however the countries like india japan china they believe in collectivism they believe in doing the work in a group in a team they believe in forming the team they believe in creating tomorrow's leader right however in case of america and europe this practice is not there now let's talk about the technological environment technology is influencing like anything technology is changing and uh, the different uh, shapes it is coming up is phenomenal since the last few decades technology is applicable of not it's actually the application of your science into some usable technology change in technology is bringing fast change in other factors of environment like culture social economical and political environment as for toffler technology feeds on itself that means technology feed on itself that means technology will come with another new technology over and over again thus technology is self reinforcing technology brings the globe together even we wonder how lord krishna created a system where dhritarashtra could see what is happening in the kushet war we were totally clueless how lord krishna can create a system where dhritarashtra can see what is going what is happening here what is happening in the kushet war until and unless that cricket commentary become possible divine maybe the divine view or the divya drishti we were not able to visualize and un- understand how this divya drishti is possible until unless video conferencing become possible so this technological advancement is making us to reconnect with our earlier days and see how things were actually in practice thousands of years before and we have lost and now we are regaining them again in the form of the technology now let's look at the influence of the technology technology is influencing the uh, investment decisions like for example J- japan invest 30% only for product innovation wherein 70% for process innovation that's how they are deciding that if i will be investing 70% on process innovation i will be coming up with more better ways of doing the same work and reducing unnecessary steps making me cost effective technology and economical development japan is buying raw material from india because india is not having technology to process those raw material they are buying the raw material at a cheaper rate and then processing coming up with the technology coming up with the goods and services and selling it back to india that's why they are doing so well without having any natural resources japan is a rich country and we despite of having natural maximum natural resources varied climatical uh, conditions are there leading to huge assortment of the resources despite of that we are a developing country because we don't have a technology technology and international competition japan could sustain any sort of international competition because they are technologically so sound they can manufacture things in 3 days the same things are going to be manufactured in 5 days by us company a particular product if japan can manufacture in 3 days same product is going to be manufactured by us in 5 days that means they are gaining the advantage and that is only possible because their investment on technology is of different style they are investing 70% in the process innovation 
however, only 30 percent in product innovation. Technology transfer is also very important, but most of the time the developed nations used to dump the obsolete technology in a country and sometimes it is okay also because we could not afford the advanced technology. Managing technology transfer and then some expert used to come to India, they used to upgrade and acknowledge how they are going to, um, how they are going to make the Indian people adjust and cope with the technology, how they can understand the technical know-how of the technology and then they uh, make the people comfortable with the new technology and further they come up with the next advancements. Now let us scan the technological environment quickly. Whenever there is a certain level of the technology of industry in the home country, you need to see what is the level of technology in my home country. Then you have to see what is the level of the technology in the host country. You have to figure out that I am having X technology standard in my home country, but it is not so in the host country. Then what is the compatibility of host country technology with the home country. If the technology is not compatible, then I need to find out the appropriate technology to fit with that host country. Study of compatibility of technology with the culture of host country including the taste and preferences of the host country customer is going to help you to satisfy your customer at the fullest. Study the host country government policy regarding technology transfer, study of the mode of technology transfer, study the impact of technology on the environment of both home and host country. These are some of the essential factors you have to take into consideration when you are scanning the entire technological environment will give you a fair idea that whether I can go straight away with the kind of technology I am using in my home country in the host country or not and if the answer is no then what adjust adjustments I need to make in order to make my technology good over there or in order to transfer my technology from my home country to the host country. Now let us quickly talk about the ecological environment of the uh, environment of the entire environment when we are scanning the environment we need to see the certain natural factors also play a significant role. Why natural factors play a significant role? Because these natural factors are going to determine the availability of certain resources or the environment for you to do the business in there. So natural factor concerns the ecological impact on the business as whether extremes become more common, business need to plan how to adapt these changes. Key environmental factors include weather condition, temperature, climate change, pollution, natural disasters like tsunami and tornado. Right. So, you have to have the fair understanding that if I am moving to a country where the weather conditions are so unpredictable, then what measures I should take well in advance to overcome those unpredictable nature of the country. Additionally, there is an increasing importance of business to be environmentally friendly with their operation as evident by the rise of the corporate social responsibility. Right. So, Knowing what ecological environment is very good, but at the same time maintaining the ecology of the environment is also equally required. And for that lot of companies have started putting up their CSR activities in order to protect the environment and also they started getting into some of the socially acceptable norms. Example of CSR initiative include carbon footprint reduction efforts, transi transition into renewable materials and energy sources. Environmental factor example, an agriculture company has to adjust its harvest forecast due to unexpectedly dry seasonal condition that will prevent crop growth. So such kind of conditions should not arise because of the practices different international or MNC companies are into. They are dumping their waste, they are not treating their waste properly which is creating a havoc in the environment. Global warming is happening, right? Soil is getting polluted, rivers are getting polluted because of which whatever we are eating is actually a contaminated food or a food of the pesticide we are eating. So that is why the mental and physical growth of the people are at question. So we need to take care of the ecological environment at by and large. And ecological environment calls for the understanding of ethical environment also. And what ethical environment is, it's actually giving respect to those people from whom you are taking the resources. If you are taking the resources of the nation, you have to give back to this nation. For giving back to the nation, you should give respect to the nature. 
And when you are taking the resources of the citizens of the nation, then you have to do certain CSR activities. This is what Tata Company is doing by and large. They are, they are sharing 60% of their entire revenue for supporting the human mankind. Now the most recent addition to the pestle is E making it pestle or steeply. This stands for ethical and include ethical principles and moral or ethical problem that can arise in a business. It considers things such as fair trade, slavery acts, child labor, as well as a corporate social responsibility where business contribute to local societal goals such as volunteering and taking part in philanthropist activities and charitable activities. For example, Tata CSR at Tata Motors, all corporate social responsibility initiatives focus on improving the quality of life of underprivileged communities, neighboring or neighboring uh, maybe neighboring countries of the business operation in the year 2021. Tata CSR intervention has touched 7.5 lakh lives in India. This is what giving back to society is from when you, from where you are taking the resource, from where you are taking the help of. Tata Motors CSR initiative across having certain key issues like Arogya, Vidyanam, like Kaushalya and Vasundra. They are trying to touch each and every field. They are touching the healthcare field, they are touching the education field, they are touching the employability field, they are touching the environmental aspects also. Tata Chemical CSR Limited is committed to serving the national local deprived community present in their area of operation. Their focus is highlighted in their initiative program and it is named as BICON, which stands for Blossom, Enhance, Aspire, Conserve, Nurture. Few more examples of ethical practices given by Ambuja Cement, Infosys, ITC, Mahindra and Mahindra, Hinduja. Bharat Petroleum Corporation, Ultratech, Cement Limited. These are the top 10 companies of a country who are putting their heart and soul in supporting the downtrodden class of society and equally taking care of the environment, ensuring that whatever the action they are taking should not harm the environment at any cost. Now let's review the lecture. Today we talked about the socio-cultural environment where we try to find out how you are going to be a manager of diversity, how you are going to be the one who can understand and respect the culture of the other country and equally keeping yourself firm and sustained for the development of the nation. Not only your home country, but also for the host country. We also observe the technological environment is having lot of influence like country like us who are very rich in natural resources but despite of being rich in natural resources country like Japan who is very poor in natural resources are termed as a rich country wherein we are termed as a developing country. Ecological environment, protecting environment is utmost important because ultimately it's not only India or China who is going to suffer because of pollution it's all we are going to suffer for because we are sharing the common ecology, we are sharing the common atmosphere. So we have to take care of dumping of our waste, we have to have proper treatment measures, we have to be equally concerned about the ethical aspects, we should understand what is right, what is wrong, we should have a clear demarcation that I as an entrepreneur, I, have, I should have some value system which I am not going to dilute even for the cost of earning the profits. These are the reference material of today's lecture. Thank you class. I hope learners you have understood today's lecture. All the best for your future. Thank you. piece of literary snippet. We usually know William Shakespeare as the most revered figure in the history of English literature. But we often tend to forget that he has also been one of the most hated figures in literature. 
And here I'm not talking only about those boys and girls who have to memorize uh, long sections from Macbeth or King Lear or Julius Caesar uh, before they can go and sit for their school and, or college exams. But I'm also talking about people who are themselves quite famous authors. Tolstoy, for instance, considered the writings of Shakespeare to be, and I quote, crude, immoral, vulgar, and senseless. George Bernard Shaw absolutely loathed Shakespeare, as he did Homer. But perhaps no other criticism about Shakespeare is more damaging than the one which says that Shakespeare is a marvelous storyteller, provided someone has told him the story earlier. Now, this piece of criticism is particularly damaging because it is true. None of Shakespeare's plays contain any original story whatsoever. They are all written using pre-existing materials, pre-existing stories. Now, does that diminish the stature of Shakespeare as a dramatist? Well, I'll leave that for you to decide. See you in the next episode of Literary Snippets.